I made a post on social media about various types of money. And an old friend of mine, from, back from the old Ron Paul days, uh, and I believe he remains a minarchist, and I have gone a different direction, but uh, he made a comment and uh, said that he has copy and pasted this to other people as well. And I thought it was a good enough comment that I thought, hey, why don't I respond to that? And instead of just responding to Evan, why don't I respond to uh, everybody who might have similar thoughts? And I don't know that I'm right, but just kind of my thoughts on this. Uh, so he says about Bitcoin, um, what cryptocurrency, what are cryptocurrencies backed by? And, you know, there's some fancy stuff that they're backed by proof of work or blah, blah, blah. My understanding is that they are backed by nothing. They are simply an electronic, digital kind of thingy that that happens. So backing, uh, nothing, nothing physical. I would say that all money is backed by a certain amount of trust. So the conch shells or whatever was used as money years ago, uh, they were backed by people thinking that conch shells had a value. Tulips had a bunch of value because people thought it did. But as far as an intrinsic value, a, a physical cold hard value, I don't think uh, cryptos have that. Um, question number two, can you purchase goods and services with it? Yes. Um, it is not as easy uh, because it's not uh, uh, not a popular thing yet. Um, it's becoming much more popular with central bank digital currencies. Um, so I guess in China, it's very popular. Everybody uses digital currency. Um, I use my Visa and MasterCard, so that's a type of digital currency. Um, as far as the non-centralized bank ones, the the free ones, um, when I say free, I mean free market as opposed to central banks, those are not as popular. Bitcoin, Dash, Ethereum, uh, Monero, all of those. Yeah, I can't go to my local convenience store and buy gas with it. Um, I've offered to my local convenience store, hey, if you learn about this stuff, then maybe I could get some of it and we could, you know, trade in that in time. But it, it takes some effort to do it. The tech geniuses who have come up with crypto have not come up with a way to make it user friendly for people. And I don't know that any engineer will ever be able to do that for people. It's just it's part of being an engineer is that uh, the person is so much uh, further ahead intellectually than lay people that there's really no way for an engineer to explain things to people. I don't think. Um, but if somebody ever does come up with that, that's the holy grail. That will be incredible. If it can be made easy, then it'll take off and, and be awesome. Um, okay, if you can purchase goods and services with it, then how are transactions made in the case of a long-term electrici electricity grid outage? Yeah, if there's no electricity, um, I guess the only way would be if a person opened up a number of different wallets and put smaller amounts in them, you know, something that you could trade for. Like if you thought, uh, you know, a vehicle is, I guess this wouldn't be a small amount, but a vehicle is $20,000 worth. Uh, so you get uh, currently roughly half a Bitcoin and you get a half a Bitcoin, you start a wallet up with that, you write down the uh, the keys to it, the 12 or 24 words on a piece of paper, and then you would have to buy the car from somebody and say, hey, these are the keys to the wallet. When the electricity comes back on, I promise not to go back into the wallet, and you would, you'll would you therefore have it. But that would take so much trust. Not many people would do that. And the gamble would be, will the electricity ever come back on? When it does, will the interwebs come back on too? And yeah, that's a definite challenge. Um, yeah. Uh, so then some of his comments are, uh, the way I see it, gold and silver are rare, still accepted by the vast majority as having value. Uh, you can more likely buy any goods or services with it. Gold doesn't decay or oxidize, and they're both useful, the best conductors of electricity, for example. While the dollar, once backed by gold, but no more, is at least material, you can buy almost any goods and services with it. But crypto is not material and is backed by imagination, and I know of no goods or services that can be purchased with it. Um, well, actually, I think material isn't the word uh, that I'm. I, I think is is as relevant here. Um, maybe tangible, uh, like 
a, a dollar bill is just a scrap of paper backed by a bunch of idiots thinking it's worth something. If everybody knew about central banking, then that scrap of pe- paper would be worth very little, uh, even less than it, it is now. What, what has it gone down uh, 98% or 97% since it was started 110 years ago? So I wouldn't say that the dollar bill itself has any value. People just look at that thing and they go, ooh, that's worth a, a half or a quarter now of a Pepsi Cola, a can of Pepsi Cola. Well, they might do the same if you were in a mechanics realm. You might have a nice bolt, and a mechanic knows that bolt is worth about a buck. And you could use bolts and nuts as money, but they're not quite as easily divisible because when the chicken farmer comes and you try to pay him in bolts, it wouldn't work. So right now, the the U.S. dollar bill is more liquid. So I wouldn't, I don't know if tangible or material is the right word, but it's more liquid because more people are willing to accept it. But its actual value of that scrap of paper is zero if other people didn't also think it had some value, which is the same as crypto or gold. Um, yeah, there's, gold and silver have a little bit of value, but the vast majority of the gold and silver that exists is for monetary purposes or jewelry or that kind of thing. It's not for actual uh, technology and such. And there are other ways to get around the te- technology issues. So. I wouldn't say that gold and silver, if nobody used it for jewelry or uh, as a precious metal like that, and they didn't use it for money, then it wouldn't have nearly as much value. But I agree that gold and silver are awesome. Um, Gold is worrisome because the government could make it illegal, just like they could make crypto illegal. Um, So, and I think we're getting to another point that I'll make here in just a moment. So I am certainly no expert, he continues. Uh, So please keep that in mind. Cryptocurrencies might be a great idea, but a big problem I see with it is it has to use the highways that the other team owns and other teams don't tolerate competition. So the highways that crypto uses um, depends on the crypto. If you're buying from Coinbase or some popular exchange, which hopefully nobody's doing. um, Yeah. If you're, if you're, thinking you're owning it, but you don't have custody of it, then you're relying on that company to hold it for you. And that's not something people should be doing. Um, I don't know where else you can get the stuff, but you definitely want to find a friend or somebody who you can buy it from and not from a, one of those places. Cause if you don't own the, the 12 or 24 word password or whatever they call it, then my understanding is you have Jack squat. You might as well just have some person you don't know on the other side of the world who says, oh, yeah, I've got uh, I've got 20 ounces of gold here. And, and let's see, what would that be, 40 grand or so? I've got 20 ounces of gold here. Anytime you want it, just let me know. Well, yeah, right. Um, you're not getting that from them. They're keeping it. It's, it's in their, I don't know, it's in their possession. Um, so it's not really doing you much good, just like anything else that you don't actually own. So definitely if you're using Coinbase or something, no. Um, Okay, so he continues, it is, was supposedly anonymous, but with know your customer laws, opening exchanges and marrying crypto with banks, uh, anonymity goes out the window. With that, there's potential for financial punishment, or whatever they call it, if you disobey or maybe even disagree with whatever ridiculousness arises. And I suspect the endless flow from the fountain of ridiculousness that psychopathic tyrants will only increase until they are ignored out of existence. Amen, brother. Um, Yeah. And so this kind of brings up a point. I think that there will be a time that Bitcoin, owning a Bitcoin is kind of like owning, um, I don't know, a, a handful of cocaine. It, it'll be like owning a handful of cocaine today. Is there value in the cocaine? Absolutely. You can go sell that to people who want it. It's a, they definitely want it. It is a thing of value. So why don't I have any cocaine in my hand or on my property? Well, because I'm afraid that some big, bad, tyrannical people are going to come and do damage to me and my family and my property if I have this thing that they don't like. So whether it's cocaine or spinach or uh, digital decentralized digital currencies yeah that's a that's a concern so for the people who have the guts the balls whatever you want to call it 
to have cocaine or crypto, you have something of value. And as long as you continue to have the guts to trade it with other people, more power to you. Like, I wish I had your kind of guts. Um, so that is definitely a concern with cryptocurrencies. Um, yeah. Okay. So then we did, he talked a little bit about outsmarting the cashless stores, uh, which I'm on the same page. I don't know that a U.S. Federal Reserve note, I, I don't think that makes that much difference. I guess it does in terms of privacy. Um, I am frustrated with the idea that with uh, PayPal and Venmo and credit cards and digital currencies like that, and with um, crypto, some crypto, like, oh, and going back, not all crypto was ever supposed to be completely hideable and not on this. Like Bitcoin was never, it's on an open blockchain. It can be figured out. There are some that are more focused on privacy, like Monero or something like that. So if you're if you're a devout Christian and you're trying to smuggle Bibles into China, yeah, you don't want to use uh, Bitcoin. You'd want to use Monero or something like that um, if you don't want it to be ide as identifiable. But a lot of these cryptos uh, with quantum computing, they're going to be busted down, as me thinks. I think that because my buddy who knows a lot more than me thinks that. Uh, so that could be coming. Okay. Uh, so I think that's my last little tangent for now. Um, so should a person use crypto? Would it be worth having some? My question that my buddy was responding to was if you could have um, a bunch of money that you buried and dug it up in a few years, five years, um, what kind of money would you want? Crypto, you know, Bitcoin or, or gold or silver or whatever. Um, I think that Bitcoin, just like gold, will be made illegal by the central bank and their employees, the U.S. government. I think that that will happen. And then it will depend. There will be some people who have buried gold and who have written down their key phrases for the the Bitcoins and who have hidden their ammunition and all the different things that could be used as a store of value or as money. There will be people who have the guts to hide that stuff and risk losing it all by telling the government that they don't have it anymore. Um, I don't know how it's all going to come out. I don't know how it's all going to turn out, but those are some of my initial thoughts. Sorry, it's such a long answer. I thought that it was a good question, though, and deserved it.